Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, just before I start, a little personal note about my looking for work. Uh, I, for now for the third time, almost got a job, uh, didn't get it. So uh, I just have to kind of like get myself back up on the horse and keep going and I'm gonna put some more effort into looking for work for sure. But I can't do it full time, so I'm gonna keep this channel kind of alive just because I think it's so much fun. Um, today I'm gonna review for you 12 fragrances from the House of Penhaligans. Uh, it's British, uh, and I, there are some fragrances there that I really like. Uh, I don't, I, I mean, they have so many fragrances, I haven't tried them all, but I just recently picked up this little discovery kit from, um, from a friend, and it has uh, 10 different fragrances. Two of them are from the Portrait Collection, and the others are more, uh, I don't know if, they, I don't know all their collections, but I know the portraits, the ones that have different heads that look like animals, or animals, maybe they don't look like, yeah, they look kind of like animals. Um, these are all different concentrations. There are EDTs in here, there are EDPs, and also EDCs, Eau de Cologne. And then I have also these two fragrances. I might begin with these that I already own. Um, there's Iris Prima that is discontinued that I really love. I think it's like a super soft, like leathery. I think it's suede, actually. It reminds me a little bit of Bottega Veneta EDP for women, um, which I find to be quite a masculine fragrance, fragrance actually. I'd, I'd say that's one of the best fragrances that you can get like in a normal store that doesn't offer any niche. Um, this one is just a beautiful kind of floral, slightly, I think it's suede. Uh, I think there's a little bit of vanilla in here. It's like a really soft, beautiful fragrance. I've been, I just got a compliment on this one not too long ago. I don't very often get compliments like that. If I give like a, a girlfriend a hug, then sometimes um, someone will say something. Uh, okay, and Artemisia has been in my collection for quite some time. Um, this one you can still get a hold of. I think this is one of their best sellers. I'm not quite sure, but it's a super easy grab. Um, I'm just spraying it a little, just remember. Oh, it has like a note of green apple here. I know my friend kind of really was happy to discover this note. I hadn't even thought of it as a green apple fragrance. There's tea in here. Uh, there's florals. There's a little bit of vanilla. It's a little musky. It's like a it's, it's just a, it's a little hard to describe, but what I think is very special about this fragrance is that it feels so expensive and luxurious. There's, it has this kind of buttery undertone. I'm not sure if it's maybe orris butter, uh, but it just is really, really, it has that really expensive kind of feeling to it that I makes me feel really sophisticated. Uh, love it, love it, love it. It's These are the kind of bottles where it really pays off to have 100 mil because it's so easy to wear. And there, it, it always fits in. Um, so yeah. Oh, now I have to be able to see my nose. I'm gonna, I just put these glasses on because I just get really bored with myself because I always look the same in my videos. And I see these other reviewers are like, they do their hair differently. They have outfits, they have different makeup. And I'm just like, I, that's, it's just not my thing uh, to get, I'm not a real clothes person. I mean, I like clothes, but I don't, it doesn't, it doesn't trigger me. Um, but I do kind of enjoy looking at others when they look different um, in their different videos. I think it's a little, definitely a little adder. Uh, okay, so now for these. So I started off last week with wearing Impressa. Uh, it's an EDP. It came out in 2018. Uh, it is um, very close to Coco Mademoiselle Intense, I think. Maybe also Coco Mademoiselle the original, I'm not, I don't know that one so well, but I used to have the Intense myself. Uh, I think this is better. Um, it's, um, it just, I don't know, it just gave me more enjoyment. It kept, it had really nice performance and it kept like, giving little, little puffs of fragrance kind of toward me all day, uh, or almost all day. I think like by early, middle, mid afternoon, it started to kind of wear off, but I think that's, that performance is pretty good for this style of fragrance. It's a, it has like citrus in the top, it has vanilla in the bottom, and some ambery, it looks kind of an ambery base. And then there's some fruits too, like peach and a dewberry. I'm not quite sure about that note. I, that's pretty unusual, I think, in fragrance. I don't even know the berry itself, uh, but that might be interesting to look into. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I mean, I sold Coco Mademoiselle Intense. I don't think it's that exciting. It's not that unique. Um, don't need a bottle of that for sure. Okay, so the next one is called uh, Luna. It's an EDT. They have these nice little, I mean, I really like their little samples. These kind of, they're pretty easy to like put on. You can just kind of like 
make a little strip of, um, of fragrance on your skin. Um, and I do prefer spray, but if it doesn't have spray, I think this is a really good kind. Uh, and you don't like lose all of it just because you're, you're, you want to try it. Um, this is, um, yeah, I've written laundry detergent and rose water. Someone wrote that on Fragrantica and that kind of hit the spot. I think that really describes what it smells like. It's a citrusy rose with a hint of bitterness. And I think the bitterness comes from bitter orange that's in there. And then it has juniper berry, which kind of gives it a little bit of an interesting twist. I might actually prefer this on a man. I just don't think it's interesting enough, but it's, I, like, I like a citrusy fragrance sometimes. I mean, it's good. It came out in 2016. Um, okay, and then there comes like a bunch of rose fragrances. I think in general, this house overdoses on rose, and I'm not a huge rose fan, but I do like some rose fragrances, especially with, when combined with darker notes. Um, yeah, I didn't even say, but both of these two that I just mentioned have also the note of rose, but not in a bad way, in a pretty good way. Um, but here comes Elizabethan Rose, uh, it came out in 2018. This has a lot of rose. This has three kinds of rose, May Rose, Rose Oil, and just plain rose. Um, and then it has these nutty notes, uh, hazelnut and almond, it has cinnamon. Um, but I, for me, it's just, I mean, it has black currant. It has interesting notes, but it's the, the rose completely takes over. When I do this, I, I mean, I do get a little fruitiness, that maybe from that black currant and plum. It's really sweet. I mean, I like like Radical Rose. Um, I like Rosai Mundi uh, from Perfume and Roma. You know, this is, maybe I'll give this another chance. It's a little candy-like. I might try this again, actually, before I pass the Discovery set on, but it's really, really rosy. So if you're not into rose, this is not, this might not even be your house. This is like, but not that fragrance. Elizabeth and Rose, I don't think you would pick that up anyway if you're not into Rose, right? Um, okay, so next is Blenheim Bouquet. That one actually does not have Rose. This is a more masculine-leaning masculine -leaning fragrance. Um, it's a, let's see, it's an EDT. Uh, this one came out, believe it or not, in 1902. And it's, uh, it's been said that Winston Churchill wore this. So if you're into historical fragrances, maybe this is something to try. I'm just gonna put a little tiny dab right there. I mean, I totally would never buy this. It's a nice, I mean, it's a little bit, it has lavender, it has some lemon, it has some black pepper, and it's a little piney. I mean, it's nice, I like it. And I know that my, I have a friend who, who whose aunt works at Penhaligans and she, she has a bunch of their fragrances and a bunch of samples from them. Uh, and she says this is really beautiful on her husband. I remember that she specifically said that. Blenheim Bouquet, it's called. I wouldn't wear it, though. Might be nice on a man, perhaps. Oh, and this one I've had. The next one is the coveted Duchess Rose, one of the portraits. This one I've had a decant of, and I thought it was too rosy, and I let it go. But it's nice to sometimes re go back and retry some fragrances. It's a musky, powdery rose it just doesn't excite me that much. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's, it's, it's a good fragrance, but it's just not my thing. It, it's, not, it's not too interesting to me. Um, but if, you like, if you're into that kind of... It has some woody notes as well. Uh, musk, mandarin, orange. I mean, yeah, citrus and rose together. That's, that's basically in half of the fragrances here. Um, oh, here comes something different. Another one of the portraits is The Tragedy of Lord George. I love their names. They're all kind of like made-up characters. Mm. Kind of a high grade on Fragrantica, 4.14. And, they, and it's, it was created by Alberto Morillas. Morillas, I'm, I'm sure it's pronounced. But um, this is definitely a masculine-leaning fragrance. And they only list a few notes here. Woodsy notes, brandy, amber, and tonka. But it's, it's definitely like a woody, spicy... Um, a slightly um, boozy fragrance. It's kind of like a classic men's fragrance, but it's also modern at the same time, kind of. I mean, I really like this fragrance. I'll probably wear this again, but I do find it a little bit more masculine leaning. Um, like an, kind of like an ambery barbershop, maybe. Um, I don't know if I'd wear this actually. Uh, there's so many, I'm so in, into so many other fragrances. I might not spend time with this, but I do recommend it. If you are a man and want to smell like a man, uh, kind of a classic man, 
I think this might be for you, The Tragedy of Lord George. Um, let's see here, what comes next? Quercus, Quercorcus, um, came out in 1996, a little older than some of these other ones. Has a slightly lower grade on Fragrantica, it's an Eau de Cologne. Oh, this one, oh, I really like this one. This is really, really nice freshy. But freshies, like with a lot of citrus in the top, usually aren't that unique, and I think this is probably no exception. It's not like incredible or like that, but it's a really good freshie. Many on Fragrantica, 163 people find it similar to CK1. Some even say it's identical, and I can kind of see that because I, I, rem I have some kind of memory of what that used to smell like, but I haven't smelled it for so long. And I, did, I could bet money, though, that this is better. This is more sophisticated, and that one is more like unfinished and not as refined. That one has a little bit more of a shampoo kind of vibe. This is more sophisticated perfume to my nose. Yeah, it, there might be a resemblance there. I mean, I wish I had it more it recent in my memory, but I, I can't quite remember. There has some Lily of the Valley, but it's not sharp at all. It has some cardamom. It, get, it has a hint of sweetness, and maybe that is because of the... I mean, it could be mandarin orange and a little bit maybe the cardamom gives it a little bit of a sweetness. Um, and it has amber in the base as well. This is a really nice freshie though. Um, definitely Quercus, Eau de Cologne. Uh, let's see what's next. Juniper Sling is quite famous, I think, and it's um, supposed to smell like gin and tonic, and I really don't like gin and tonic at all. I find that to be a quite metallic kind of drink. I don't like the smell, I don't like the taste. So for me, it's kind of, I don't know about this uh, comparison, but this one smells really natural, but there is a gin and tonic vibe for sure. Uh, this one just has like, I mean, it has these nice, it's piney, um, and it's juniper berry, which I think is like, come, or that's kind of like the thing that reminds a gin and tonic. Some orange, cinnamon, which I don't get so much. It's more of a, of a sheer kind of transparent kind of fragrance. And it then has that sugar and cherry in the base uh, with together with vetiver and amber. And vetiver, I could imagine, but sugar and cherry? I don't know. I don't know if I can get that. Mm, I might wear this again because this I, I, I need to spend more time with this one. I'm, I'm kind of like getting... Vetiver's growing on me a little bit and so is like uh, juniper and kind of like odd odd notes that I before have classified as more masculine notes are kind of becoming more interesting to my nose. Um, this also has the note of Angelica, which is I, 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 not to be mixed up with Artemisia. Artemisia is a bitterish note, and Angelica is has a musky, woody, sweet, rooty smell. Oh, and maybe there the sweetness comes it might come from in this one. Um, but this one is not as sweet as Quercus, I don't think. It, there's, a sweet, there's some sweetness in here. It has cardamom as well. Um, I, I need to spend more time with Juniper Sling. I think this is an interesting fragrance. Oliver Crisp created it and it came out in 2011. It also has 4.14. Uh, the grade is as high as um, The Tragedy of Lord George. So, so those are popular fragrances. Um, okay, so this one coming up here is the one that I like the best first time round, like when I was you know, review, I was kind of preparing for this video last week, and it's called Endymion uh, Concrete. So it's like a, an intense version of Endymion. I guess it comes in two concentrations. This is the EDP concentration, and maybe the other one is an EDP as well, and this might just be a flanker, I'm not quite sure, but it is, the first thing I thought about when I smelled this was um, Reflection Man. Um, so of course I had to try them side by side and I found that Reflection Man is super, super potent compared to this. So this is really kind of a weak fragrance, unfortunately, because I don't like weak fragrances and don't like to spend my money on them. And I think that this is about British kind of polite perfumery, that none of these are loud. Like these don't, I think British perfumery is really different from like American perfumery is louder. I mean like imaginary authors and um, what's it called? Kerosene and um, Italian perfumery, you know, like Perfume Roma is like really loud and so is Zerjoff. This is like really fine-tuned. Uh, these fragrances are all like office safe. They're not going to be in somebody's face. You don't have to worry about that you might be bothering people. This does have kind of a little bit of that same little bit laundry detergent kind of feeling. It's very clean, um, just like Reflection Man. Um, a little bit powdery, but there are notes in here that I cannot detect at all. It has coffee, 
it has uh, leather, and it has a libanum, an incense, but they're all, it's tiny, tiny doses. To me, this is more like a, a clean, musky fragrance. Mm. It has a la little bit of lavender in it, the top, I think maybe uh, is the same for, let me see, I can, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the side-by-side -side I made here. Oh, they don't have a lot in common at all, actually, uh, note-wise. Sandalwood and vetiver, that's about it. But then there's like, um, one of them has lavender, and Endymion has lavender, and uh, Reflection Man has rosemary. Um, let's see, uh, Endymion has bergamot and mandarin orange, and then uh, Reflection Man has pedigrain and neroli. So maybe, the, you know, they give different kind of freshness there. Uh, what else could there be? There's no, but this Reflection Man has patchouli. I would never have been able to say. It doesn't, for me, it's not at all of a patchouli fragrance, but it's a lot stronger than Endym Endymion Concretier. Um, and I was, I thought for sure Reflection Man had lavender, but it doesn't. Um, they're not as similar as I first thought, which is something kind of that, it just kind of came to my mind when I sniffed it. It's, it's really a nice fragrance. Um, I don't know if I would buy a full bottle because of the performance is not that great. I want to, I, I would like some more, uh, a little bit of a louder fragrance, I think, to spend that kind of money, because these aren't cheap fragrances. Um, I mean, they have different price categories. I know Artemisia, for example, this one was like $170, $180 for 100 mil, and the portraits uh, the portraits are much higher than that. Uh, they, they come in 75 bo mil, and they're more expensive than 100 of that one. So you have to look at the prices. They're all different. And then there, this last one, Halfetti, is really famous. Um, it was named after a small Turkish village and kind of the good and like smells is supposed to smell, I guess, like the goods that were traded in this village. Um, I mean, it has spices, it has nutmeg, it has rose, oud, leather, tonker, amber, vanilla. It's kind of a, I, I think it's a kind of a masculine complex men, you know, men's fragrance, not so sweet, kind of a dark fragrance. But it doesn't go as dark as like a typical rose, oud, and patchouli fragrance. This is more, this one doesn't have patchouli listed either. It's, it, I mean, I, I really like this. I just think it might be a little too masculine leaning for me. Yeah, and it has some, some uh, citruses in the top, artemisia in the, in the top as well. So maybe there's some bitter, bitterness. I, I get a little bit of a barbershop vibe from this, but in like in the combo is kind of with these oriental base notes. So it gives a completely different vibe, but maybe it's the top that is kind of uh, barbershop leaning with these citruses in the top and then that little, that, that herbal kind of artemisia in there that gives a little bitter note. Um, I'm not sure, maybe the nutmeg. The nutmeg, I mean, I find that in a lot of oriental fragrances, but oud, leather, cedar, sandalwood, vetiver, amber, tonka, musk. I mean, that's like a, that, those are pretty heavy base fragrances, but this is not so heavy. Um, this is really nice, actually. Okay, so my, like my, my favorites are, of course, the ones that I own. And here I would say, if I had to choose between these, I would choose Artemisia first, and then Iris Prima. After that, I would choose Endymion. Um, number four would be Halfetti, I think. And then maybe after that, Juniper Sling, The Tragedy of Lord George. Those are the ones that I liked enough to kind of like wear them again. Um, if you are a man and like want traditional male fragrances, I think these might, some of these other ones might be interesting. Like definitely Tragedy of Lord George, uh, Quercus, uh, the good, the, the freshy. Mm with the Lily of the Valley, the CK1 copy. I mean, I, I don't know, it came, I guess it came out sort of when CK1 came out. This is a more, this is like a better version, I think, than that one. Um, Blenheim Bouquet, I would also try. Uh, maybe, I mean, I'm not, I mean, not that there has to be a straight line between like masculine, feminine fragrances. I mean, all these oriental fragrances that I've been wearing lately uh, are for sure unisex. I mean, today, I'm, the, early this morning, I was wearing um, material uh, from Amouage, and it's for women, but there's nothing f feminine about it, really. It's a, it's kind of a spicy, woody kind of amber that's very dry, and I'm, I've been, it, I mean, it has vanilla, but it's not a feminine vanilla at all. I have been loving it. 
um, that's going to be a separate video. I'm going to, I'm, I'm kind of working my way up to doing a real kind of a wide uh, amouage uh, review. I only have one bottle, but I have a bunch of decants now and I've been wearing, I've been wearing them a lot. Uh, and I have all kinds of opinions about these fragrances. So, um, stay tuned for that video. It'll be coming up and, uh, do check out Penholigans and, it would be interesting to see, um, do you find British perfumer, perfumery more like uh, careful and more like draw, a little more subdued and polite compared to like Italian, French, American perfumery? Or is there nothing like that? And do you think that it matches like the culture of the people? Because I do find, you know, like British people, they're not as loud as Americans. Um, they're more polite maybe. Um, I mean, I, th I do find Americans polite. They always say, excuse me. They're much politer than Swedes, for sure. Um, I, d I do also find Italians to be, like, more loud than British people. They use their hands a lot. They, they kind of, um, you notice them more. And I have an opinion about, like, French people are maybe a little more elegant and sophisticated. And they, they, um, they care more about their appearance, perhaps, than, than um, from... I don't know, from other cultures. I don't know if this is true or not, and uh, please comment. Uh, I think it's kind of fun just to see if there's any difference um, from that cultural perspective to see what you think about that. Okay, that was all for now.